Scarlet and Violet introduced one of the largest rosters of new Pokemon. And because the new Generation 9 game, Pokemon Legends ZA, takes place in the Kalos region, a region that shares a border with Paldea, it'd be a shame if we had to wait 10 years for Game Freak to revisit and build upon great designs like Tinkaton, Scovillain, or Bax Caliber. What's going on everyone? It's Dusty Go Goat. Welcome back to my head cannon. With every new game, we get new Pokemon designs, and Pokemon Legends ZA will be no different. I fully expect to see new regional forms and evolutions for Pokemon that have adapted to the Kalos region. And even though Game Freak loves Kanto, I mean no disrespect, I'm ready to move on. Please, Game Freak. The next time we get standard evolutions, regional forms, or a mega evolution, I want the attention to be on Generation 9. Let's begin with the Gen 9 starters. Pokemon Legends Arceus has opened up the possibilities of starter Pokemon getting new regional forms. So let's say back in the day, the three Paldean starters will evolve to get a new set of typing. I love seeing Skeledurge with this fire water type. It now has blue flames to suggest that it's even hotter, but the blue flames are also a symbol of this Pokemon being the water type. And alligators live in the water, obviously, so I think this would be a really cool type combination, especially as a starter. To see one of the starters get one of the other elemental types is really great. We've got Quaxquaval over here, now becoming a fairy type. The artist has deliberately given this new Quaxquaval design a kimono look, so now it would be one of those kimono dancers. Maybe this actually fits a Legends Johto game a little bit better. And this grass and steel type Meow Scarada, rather than its tricks focusing on illusions, it instead focuses on knife tricks. I love how the artist takes inspiration from the Sabertooth Tiger and gives it these metal fangs as well as claws. And it's got much more of a woolly coat. I'm seeing a lot of similarities here with Galarian Meow. One of my favorite Pokemon in Generation 9 is Tandem Mouse as well as its evolution, Mouseold. Tandem Mouse has two different evolutionary forms, focusing on the amount of children that it has. What if the three family Mouseold evolved again into a normal and dark type Pokemon called Mouse Spoiled. This art depicts the single mouse basically becoming the stereotype of a spoiled only child. Uh, the singular mouse gets huge, right? Basically carrying its parents. The parents look miserable. The child looks angry. This design makes me laugh so much. The child just eats all day and, and throws its parents uh, at the opponent, assuming this would be in battle. Tandem Mouse and Mouse Sold are adorable designs, but I do feel like something like this could add a lot to the Pokemon line. Alternatively, I could see there being a regional Mouse Sold or Tandem Mouse. This artist depicted Tandem Mouse as a poison type Pokemon. You know, mice typically are associated with disease. I believe this design takes inspiration from the Rat King myth, where basically two mice get their tails tied together, which is already kind of what we see with Tandem Mouse. But then basically what happens is uh, as this Pokemon evolves it's kind of it's honestly kind of dark and gruesome but one of them just keeps collecting all these dead mice right and when it gets this regional evolution mouse king it actually gains the ghost type this mouse has longer whiskers it's got two earrings to make it look kind of tough it's got these beady glowing yellow eyes and a chewed off ear and it's standing on the bodies of all of these tandem mouse that have passed on uh, pretty dark design i also like that this deviates away from the normal typing charcadet and its evolutions is another great line that was introduced in generation 9 i always saw a lot of similarities between Charcadet and Pokemon like Tyrogue. Uh, I actually don't even know why Charcadet is not a baby Pokemon. This whole line, Armourous, Charcadet, Seraledge, linguistically it all feels so French coded, which is perfect for the Kalos region. I would love to see Charcadet get additional evolutions that vary in typing. We obviously got Cerulege and Armourous, which are a ghost and psychic type respectfully. They, le they, they keep the fire typing, but I would love to see additional evolutions Maybe we have a fire and steel type. This one could be called Babarod. There's also Tsunami, which would be another fire and water type Pokemon. I think this is so cool. Um, there's a lot of similarities here. I feel like this design was based on uh, the Clauncher line, but maybe that's actually how it evolves. Maybe similar to the armor that Cerulege and Ar Armor Rouge need um, in order to evolve, right? They, they get those armors from Pokemon. Maybe you need to collect the shell armor of Clauncher and its evolution in order to evolve this Pokemon. This thing looks like Mega Man or it looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, type hero creature. I think it's super cool. And then we also have Kunai. Kunai would be fire and dark type, which plays with these floating Kunai, which are like ninja daggers. These 
These Pokemon are so cool. Uh, we need more, I want more armored based combat Pokemon. These like swordsman type Pokemon are so cool. This is Duralava, the fire and ground type evolution for Charcadet. Another beautiful design by the Andu region. If you carry 10 Golet fragments, you can exchange them for a Golem armor, which would allow Charcadet to evolve into Duralava. You can see the patterns of the Golet. That's something that's really cool about any sort of armor evolution, right? You can see the held item attached to the new evolution's body. You can see actually elements of Golet in the Pokemon. Its body is made of rock and magma. These Pokemon are very obedient and I can see them being used to dig deeper and deeper to fulfill the greed of the humans in their area. Okay, I'm gonna indulge just one more time with a Charcadet evolution. This is Hydralgon, a fire and dragon type. Charcadet will evolve when it's exposed to the scale armor. I imagine the scale armor is comprised of Drudagon scales. Hydralgon is a symbol of royalty. He was the companion of kings, nobles, and renowned generals in medieval times. Just like Armor Rouge, I can see this Pokemon firing dragon beams from its arm cannons. Now we've got a Pokemon that a lot of people originally said either shouldn't have an evolution or its evolution is a little bit redundant. This Pokemon by Mr. DJ Walnut, Bramble Legion, would be an evolution for either Bramble or Bramblegast. I do see it more as a maybe a held item evolution where Bramblegast uh, evolves into this thing. I like that it's it keeps the shape. Like this is what a lot of Pokemon designs do, right? They take one element of the previous form and reinterpret it or use the shape or silhouette uh, or color, right? in another part of the final evolution's body. It doesn't just grow bigger, but the design elements are used in different ways. So you can see like the formation of its head it, of, of this like twister dust buster. It's like a dusty ghost, but the head of it is made up of what Bramblegast looks like. But then you can also see all these different Bramblin, Bramblegast shapes uh, throughout its body, creating the silhouette of its body. Its hands are basically what Bram the same type of plant material that Bramblin is based on. I think this is a really great design. Um, if something like this was introduced, 100% I would use it on my team. These are the kind of designs that felt missing from the Paldea Index. This next design we have is a cross-gen evolution for Tadbold. Tadbold is the Generation 9 Tadpole Pokemon. It's electric type and it evolves into Belly Bolt. But what if Tadbold could evolve into a zombie? This is Zombolt. It's an electric and ghost type Pokemon. I love that it is the exact opposite of Belly Bolt. Belly Bolt is a lively, energetic, plump frog Pokemon. Zombolt is the exact opposite. It's got a very neutral emotion. Its anatomy resembles a skeleton. And I feel like the play here is that Zombolt is a dead battery. If this whole line is about electricity, what if you don't have that power anymore? What would happen to the Pokemon? Well, it dies. I also like that it, it can inflate its arms, that same like plasma ball look. Matches the original Belly Bolt's belly. I'm going to throw this next one in. Uh, definitely not needed. I mentioned baby Pokemon earlier. I feel like we're missing, I feel like there should be more baby Pokemon. Baby Pokemon kind of are Dex filler, but I feel like there are some standalone single stage Pokemon that could have some uh, pretty adorable preforms. This is Flamino, which I'm pretty sure means baby in Spanish. Uh, Flamino is just a flying type, and then when it evolves, it evolves into Flamigo, which is uh, obviously flying in fighting type. This design is really great because it doesn't just look like a small Flamigo, it actually has its own color palette. It takes the rubbery knot around Flamigo's neck and creates a new design element to make this baby form look as if it can't swim, which is true, right? Babies can't swim. Even this baby Flamingo can't swim. So you can see right here, Flamino is just floating behind uh, its parent. And once it finally evolves, it's then tall enough to no longer need the floaty because it can just stand. If Game Freak is listening, I really do want more baby Pokemon. The only baby Pokemon that we got in the last like 15 years was Toxel in Generation 8. All right, Scovillain is next. There's been a lot of talk online that Scovillain seems to be completely unfinished. It seems to be an unfinished design. I think a lot of people are drawing comparisons between Scovillain, Doduo, Zwellius, and a lot of other uh, two and three headed Pokemon. Capsicid, the little pepper seed, evolves into Scovillain with two heads. But I think there's a lot of potential. There's been a lot of designs online, fake bond designs, that depict Scovillain with multiple heads, multiple colored pepper heads. Scovillain isn't as powerful as it could be. Uh, it's only a two stage form. Grass and Fire is such an, an awesome type. And I love Scovillain. I think it's an excellent design, but I think there's untapped potential. 
One option is to make Scovillain evolve for a third time, give it the three heads, maybe an orange or a yellow uh, pepper head, and that one can have a little bit different of a personality. I like the idea of Scovillain getting so big and powerful that it's forced to fall over on four legs, basically. It becomes a quadruped. This would make the design look a lot more beastly and, and powerful looking. Like all of a sudden this Kappa now resembles more of a dinosaur or a dragon. That would, I mean, I think this design right here is excellent. Uh, I've seen a couple other designs. Uh, here's one by my friend, Professor Corey. I think another option is to give Scovillain new regional forms or convergent forms. Scovillain is a spicy pepper Pokemon, but there are a lot of fruits and vegetables that this thing could be based on. I think very easily Scovillain could be reimagined as a lemon and lime Pokemon. Lemon and lime are paired together. They're both citrus. And I think it works too perfect, right? You could make this Pokemon grass and electric type, um, which mirrors the green and yellow color. Truthfully, I think this Pokemon would actually just be a key lime because key limes are either green or yellow, depending on how ripe they really are. You could even give Caps a kid a regional form while you're at it and have it evolve into this new Scovillain with a Thunderstone. And then what if you were to cool off Scovillain, right? Make it a grass and ice type. What would that look like? I think it would look like this Pokemon right here. Its leaves now resemble a scarf. It kind of looks like a candy cane. The pink and green kind of look like Christmas colors. And you could even classify this cold Scovillain as the chili pepper Pokemon. Well, what if Gimme Ghoul was this little gingerbread uh, insect little creature, right? Gimme Ghoul is already pretty weird. Make it a fairy and ghost type, right? And instead of collecting gold coins, it actually goes around and collects chocolate gold coins. Instead of instead of a gold chest, it hangs out in this little candy bag. Um, I think this is so cute. Its antenna look like candy canes. And yeah, like I said, it looks like a, it looks like a gingerbread man. And instead of hoarding all of the gold coins, it actually eats all of the gold coins. And it becomes this overly stuffed Pokemon that looks like it's made of chocolate. I think we've all been there and can relate to this Pokemon. Again, the contrast to the original Godango design is great. Uh, rather than being this slender uh, surfer Pokemon, this thing looks like it'd be a lot more tanky. I also love the fairy and ghost type. I know that's a good type competitively. Fido is an interesting Pokemon. I love that they've been continuing to add food-based fairy type Pokemon. And when this Pokemon was introduced, there was a lot of speculation about how it would evolve. Obviously a Pokemon based on dough would need heat to cook and then finally evolve. We really didn't see any of that in the final game, but I do think there's possibility for us to get a regional form. Make Fido a fairy and fire type. This regional form is based off of a churro. This regional Fido gets a new regional evolution into Churover. This Pokemon is based on a completely different dog. It's a lot more slender. You can see at the tip of its tail and its ears, there is steam releasing from the inside of this bread. Churover is a little bit of a goofy dog. We got a lot of goofy dogs in generation nine, but I really like the regional variation that we see in even Fido. Cetaudel and Cetitan are very weird because, because their whole concept is based on a land whale. Well, what happens if you take that land whale and you put it back in the water? Obviously, it becomes water type. I think this Pokemon could have remained as an ice type or maybe they could give it uh, steel typing. Water steel type would be very good. This Pokemon is naturally bold this new regional Cetaudel would evolve with a water stone. This is another design that I think could exist or be conceptualized to fit within the Paldean region in a different time period. What if the Tinkaton line didn't have access to modern metal crafting, right? I guess if there was no access to Corviknight, this Pokemon wouldn't be able to get any of these metal scraps and it would have to rely on different minerals in order to make its weapons. Uh, this Pokemon looks as if it's using rocks, but I think what this actually is, is it's using bones. This Pokemon's using bones. Uh, so the rock type is really a reference to fossil Fossilization. This Pokemon is fairy rock type, so it keeps the fairy type. And this shade of blue or turquoise reminds me of ice. So I'm getting the idea that these Pokemon would exist in some sort of uh, ice age or post ice age where the Paldean region is very, very cold and they collect the bones of Pokemon to make their weapons, jewelry, and crown. All right, next we have a regional form for Flittle and Espathra. I think Flittle and Espathra are deliberately based on uh, ostriches, on ostrich chicks, but I do think they have a lot of design elements that look more like uh, underwater sea life, like squids, octopus, 
Um, and because they're on land, I honestly get a huge alien vibe from these Pokemon. It actually has eyelashes. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a bird with eyelashes. And Espathra has a wig. Have you ever seen a bird with hair? My main theory is that while these Pokemon are based on ostriches and other large birds, I feel like that outward design is really a decoy. Think of Wobbuffet, right? The theory around Wobbuffet is that the big blue blob, the main body of Wobbuffet, is really just a decoy for the tail which is really just a shadow. This regional form for Espathra and Flittle kind of helped conceptualize my theory and my, my thought process when it comes to this Pokemon. This regional form is pure ghost type and this regional Flittle evolves into a Pokemon called Fledged. This form of Espathra looks more like a ghost, right? The tail feathers, the ribbons, the quote unquote feathers of Espathra now look like your classic white ghost. And the true form, the true head of this Pokemon is its tail. You can see this tail lashing out from behind. It looks like the beak and the skull of a dead bird. You'll have to let me know which of these are your favorite designs in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you're still watching. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and good luck hunting.